So I guess when, whenever Tua does come back, one thing that will be a focus is can we do anything to prevent the likelihood of concussions moving forward? Have you and Mike and the medical staff talked about potential solutions in terms of how he falls to the ground and also the helmet? I know there's been a lot of talk about Kenny Pickett wearing a helmet that has more padding than what two is where have you all talked about these possible solutions um I, w I would say not specifically at this moment um i think in passing there's been conversations about about different things in terms in terms of that but nothing that we've huddled up and you know come to a come to a consensus i think it's just important for him right now to um you know to to re to rehab i guess is the is the word you know is is heal up and um, be able to focus on his day-to-day -day things that he's going through now you see from Teddy and his, I guess, two extended games, minus the Jets game, but obviously against the Bengals against the Vikings, that makes you optimistic about uh, this upcoming game against the Patriots. Well, I think I think you look at Teddy's whole body of work. You know, I, I mean, Teddy's been in the NFL for a long time. Um, he's a KG veteran player. Yeah, he's he's seen a lot of defenses. He's played a lot of football. So um, um, I, I'm really excited about the things that, that he can bring for bring to us. Um, it's really important that we do things that. Um, that will help him be successful as well. So I think there's been a good collaborative effort working together to make sure that he's going to be able to be put in the best situation to help our offense be successful. But there's a good history there of, of him playing really good football. What are some of the things in his toolkit on the field? What has he got going for him? I know, for example, he obviously has a, a high career completion percentage. Yeah, well, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that he does well. You know, I think first of all is is the experience that he brings. You know, that's that's first and foremost. He's been in a lot of locker rooms. He's been in a lot of huddles. Um, he he knows a lot of offense. He has a lot of a lot of background. So it's not like he needs. Um, you know, a thousand reps of, you know, this specific things because over time he's accumulated those reps and he's seen a lot of things. So um, the things that we're able to do with him, he, he'll be able to um, diagnose the coverages, diagnose the looks that he's getting from the opponent, and um, he'll be able to put himself in, in those positions because he has all those banked reps. Um, he, he throws a great ball. He can throw a great deep ball. Um, he's, he's an accurate passer. He has um, better movement skills than you think. And um, you know, so excited to see him play. There's yeah. a lot of talk about what, when uh, Tua began to show these concussion symptoms. Can you detail what you saw from him in the second half on Sunday, and then uh, Monday when I guess you might have been part of the process with Coach McDaniel and determining he needs to get checked? Or? Yeah, um, you know, I think the process really probably started on Monday morning. You know, as we, um, um, you know, for me, for me, it was actually the night. You know, because I go back and watch the game. Um, Sunday night had enough time to be able to do that. So just saw you know, saw some things in the game, and then um, then talked to Tua the next morning, and basically from that information, then you know the information that we had, you know, talking to coach as well, thought it was important for him to be able to see the docs. Did he seem off to you when you talked to him Monday morning? Was he at all off to you in terms of conversation? Well, I don't know. I don't know what off means, but it was. I, I would just say there was enough. I would say there was enough information there that we we thought it was important for him to be able to go see the doctor. And during the game, did you suspect anything because a comment was made yesterday by a player that possibly maybe he thought something might have been off with the offense and Tua said he thought maybe that he might have called an incorrect play. How much do you talk to Tua during the game and did you even suspect that something might be amiss during the game? Yeah, I, I mean, I talked to Tua after after every series. We have a lot of, a lot of conversations. Um, there was nothing, f you know, at me at that time that indicated that, that it was off. Um, but you know when you when you go back and you start pie piecing it together, you know because all that stuff's happening in real time, and you're you know making corrections of you know whatever's happening, and hey if we get this again let's do this or we're going to make this adjustment. So there's always those conversations. Um, so it was it wasn't until after that you know the next morning. Do you suspect that that might have had anything to do with the three interceptions that that. Now, what we now know as a concussion might have had anything to do with those three interceptions. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's hard for me to to, to make that speculation. Uh, have you seen him in the last day? How is he doing? Uh, I saw him today. Um, he he has been in the building, but he's not he's not with us. He's you know he's with the training staff, and um, you know it's just great to see him in the building. Seem to be doing okay, or hard for you to judge just from limited interaction. I mean, seems seems to be okay. So he won't be in, in the meetings this week with you guys. Um, it's day to day, so I, I mean today he's not. There was a um, there was a quote that or I guess a phrase that that Tua has always said like let let every play 
stand on its own merit. And I think that that comes from you. I was curious where it would have done originate from. Yeah, it's just something um, you know in in my background that I that I've had that. Um, you know, when you, when you play the quarterback position, there's there's so much that goes into it. You know, it's such a mental, um, it, it, it's just such a huge mental game for, for a quarterback, um, whether it's play calls, whether it's defenses, whether just all the information that they have to that they have to take in, and then things that are happening during the game. So um, it's just kind of a way for them to be able to uh, not hold on to the last play, or you know, something. You know, let's say they made a mistake on a, on a play back here, you have to continue to move on, or um, you know, situations happen in a game where you got pressure on one play, where you can't say the next play is going to have pressure again. You know, those things that kind of get in your head is human nature. So um, that each play stands on, a, on its own merit is, you know, we have to play this play, and then no matter what happens, it's gone. And then the next play, hey, what happens on this play? And I got to make sure that I, you know, stay within the framework of, of that one opportunity. And, you know, just something that we've been preaching in our room. The author of that, or you're the author of that phrase, did you get it? Um, I don't know if I'm the author of it, but um, but uh, most one that we use, yeah. Darryl, your name has been uh, brought up as a potential candidate for some uh, coaching jobs. Uh, I know right now you're focused on these two weeks, but is that something you might want to get into uh, at some point in the future? I've, I've been asked this question a hundred times. Um, you know, uh, yeah, it's something that that um, I definitely want to do. Um, whenever whenever the time happens, is something that I'd be ready for. Uh, but right now, like you said, I mean, this is this is a huge opportunity for us. Daryl, with two games left in the regular season, what do you think are the chances that Tua plays in the regular season? Oh, I I don't think we can even answer that question right now. I, I think it's truly a day to day deal, um, and then you know see see how he's reacting, see how what the medical professionals are the ones that say um, that's not a that's not a question that I'll be able to answer.